Hello, welcome, welcome. We're so excited that you're here for our event today. Um, Tiffany has some amazing stuff that she's going to be sharing with us today. And we are so excited that we have such a big audience that we're um, excited about this, this session today. Um, so the Google Suite Life with Schoology, I came to Tiffany. She is part of my GEG Colorado. She's a soon to be co-leader. And I am the leader of GEG Colorado. And um, I came to her and said, hey, teachers are using Google, but they're also using Schoology. How do these two go together? Everybody wants to know. So Tiffany has some really great content for you today. I'll let her introduce herself and tell you a little more about her. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Tiffany Lasasso, like Amber said, and I am so excited to get going with you guys and talk to you about Google and Schoology and how these two lovelies integrate. Um, but before we get started, some of you guys are joining us at least for a small amount of time because you joined the, the GEG Global Boot Camp and you entered our contest. Um, I have one free Google Certified Educator Level 2 test voucher that we are going to be giving away right now. So let me get that. Yay. I'm staying live for this because I want to see. <laughs> All right. And we have over 500 names in here. So good luck. And let's see who we got. All right, Dara. So I am going to um, reach out to you with an email a little bit later today and send you the code and everything so you can take care of that. Woohoo! Good job. Perfect. Awesome. I'll put her name in the chat there so everyone knows and she knows if she comes later. And Tiffany, I am so excited for all of your content today. So I'm going to let you take it away. Beautiful. All right. Bye, Amber. <laughs> okay, guys. So again, I'm Tiffany. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Redhead EdTech. Uh, my email is also there. You are welcome to email me anytime. Little bit about me before we get going. So I am starting a new position as a digital teacher librarian for a middle school in Jeffco Schools, and I'm really excited about it. Um, previously, my cat's knocking some stuff down. Uh, previously, I've spent the last two years as a digital instruction coach. And what that means is I have been supporting teachers with technology. So that's my job, that's my jam. Before that, I taught English language arts for eight years in a couple of different districts here in Colorado. I am a Google for Education certified trainer and I am a Schoology ambassador as well. And so that's why I'm here to talk to you guys about this because I love both products. I know both products really, really well and I want to make sure people are feeling good about integrating them. Uh, as I heard, a lot of you guys are going Schoology this year first time, or maybe you tried it at the end of last year or something. And so you're ready to really figure it out and spend some time. And so that's why we're here. Um, I also am a part of GEG Colorado. And so if you don't know what that is, uh, that's our Google Educator Group for Colorado. And it's just a, a team where we kind of provide resources and we get everybody some tips and share ideas and provide these lovely professional developments. Uh, a little bit more about me. So here's my beautiful family. I have a three-year-old daughter and a four-month-old son. And then, yes, those of you guys who have the keen eye there, um, I am a Harry Potter fanatic. And yes, that is me in my own Harry Potter robes, go Ravenclaw, in my Harry Potter <laughs> photo shoot, because that's who I am as a human. So yeah, we're that's that's a little bit about me. Just want to do a quick plug for GEG Colorado or GEGCO, as I like to call it. Uh, an awesome group. There's our leadership team right there. We'd love to have you. We try to update on Facebook and Twitter somewhat, you know, a lot, I guess. Uh, and so we just, it's a place to share ideas. So join us if you like. There's our info right there. Tiffany, I have a lot of people that are saying yes, Ravenclaw, but oh, they have a Hufflepuff in there too. There's an that's a okay. part Hufflepuff, so I'm with. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I love that that popped up. Okay, so um, here is the presentation, so you can get that. Um, 
go ahead, make a copy of it, share it with people. That's why I made it. It's there for you. There's also some slides that are hidden on that because it just kind of goes into the breakdown a little bit more. Um, and that way you can keep access to it. And then as a cover my own butt situation, I just need to say that I do not work for Google and I do not work for Schoology. So I am just here to provide you guys with some support. Um, but yeah, don't like sue me or like say Tiffany said this and she works for you. Don't do that. Um, and then my last little heads up before we get going is enjoy yourself, play around. If you grab the presentation and leave, cool. If you follow me to a T and do everything I'm doing, cool. If you just want to sit back and listen, cool. Uh, whatever makes sense for you, because this is about you and I want you to get the most out of this. Okay. So um, it looks like my ladies are dropping that info on the screen for the presentation. So please grab it. And then here is what we are doing today, just our, our agenda. So you've got an idea of what we're doing and when. Okay, so let's jump in with the basics. Now, this is going to be just a kind of a brief overview. And as I mentioned, I know some of you guys are brand new to Schoology or pretty new to Schoology. And so there are going to be some things that you're going to go, wait, I don't know what that is. Um, and because I'm not covering everything, this isn't like an intro to Schoology course. It is going to give you some beginner tips, but it's not going to explain like where the courses are and how to do this. It's just going to be talking about how Google and Schoology integrate. Okay. If something doesn't make sense though, and you are still like, I'm so, I'm so new, please help reach out to me, send me a tweet, um, send me an email, whatever you need, and I'm happy to help. You can also reach out to Schoology themselves. They are really efficient at helping people. They have so many resources um, and we have lovely ambassadors who would be happy to help you as well, okay? So the big thing is, as I have displayed here, Google is all powerful, all right? Google is the big G, Schoology is the little S because Google is way more powerful than Schoology. Please remember that, okay? Just because I put some Google file into Schoology doesn't mean that people have access to it, okay? I've got to make sure that my Google sharing settings are set so people can see them, okay? Make sure you do that because Google is in charge, they have more money, all that good stuff. So keep that in mind. Because these are two different companies and you know there's always gonna be some little snags and things like that, sometimes your Google and Schoology connection does break, okay? If that happens, there are a crazy number of reasons why I can't even explain all of them. Last year in my district, uh, we saw this huge issue because Google Chrome did an update and it broke a bunch of connections. So what I have here is if you want, there is a link, you can go and there is a giant list of different things to try if that connection broke, okay? So I may have borrowed this from my previous district and made it my own. So um, thank you to the folks who put that together. But this, yeah, so many reasons why that connection might break. If you don't have time to go through that list, reach out to Schoology. If your district gives you access to the chat, Schoology person, um, it like they're like that. They're so fast and so awesome. Okay. So that's the big thing you need to know about Google. What you need to know about Schoology is that there's different levels of Schoology. Just like how Google, there's like Google Enterprise, Google Free, Schoology has the same. Okay, and so I do have links to each of the different kinds of Schoology. And I just wanted to call that out so you know if I'm showing you something and you're like, hang on, that doesn't look like mine. It's because there's different levels. And if you have one level and maybe your district turned off something or hasn't like toggled something on, whatever the case is, just keep that in mind that there are going to be differences. I am trying to keep it as common as possible, but I, you know, there's a million districts in the world here. 
Okay, so, and I also, one of the like simplest differences I wanted to show you is the difference in their banners. So this top banner is for the Schoology free version. Okay, so you notice it's got a blue background, it's got the word Schoology and I cut it off, but it says upgrade, right? The next one is from the district I'm coming from, Denver Public Schools. So they kept that Schoology blue, but it's got Denver Public Schools right there. And then the school district I'm coming to now, Jeffco, we changed it. So we have a gray background, we have our Jeffco logo and we kept the word Schoology. So keep in mind, even the colors might be different in the stuff we're gonna talk about today. Um, and I think that that's about it that I wanted to talk about with Schoology. So in a second, I'm gonna jump right in to the meat of everything that we're doing here. But I just wanna acknowledge, so before this session, we had over 500 people registered for this event. And that might mean some people are joining us live or they're gonna watch it later or whatever the case is. But, you know, drop your questions in the chat. I have Amber and my friend Drea are in the chat trying to help out and, you know, all of that sort of thing. They're gonna try to pop in once in a while if there's some common questions coming up and, you know, just reach out, help each other out if you know an answer somebody's got going on. The other thing I wanna say is I've got one hour and there's a ton of information. And so I am gonna be going pretty quickly, but that's why I shared the slides with you guys because I want you to be able to go back at any point, okay? So if you're going, wait, 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 slow down, slow down. Keep in mind, you can come to this recording later and rewatch it and slow it down and you have access to the slides so you can go through those things later, okay? So let's get started, I'm so excited. Okay, so the first kind of thing we're gonna talk about is having your students access Google Files through Schoology. So that might be that I have a form or a survey I want them to fill out, or that might be I've got a slide deck from today's lesson that I just want them to be able to check out, okay? My students aren't doing anything really. It's just, I need them to access these resources. That's what this is about, okay? So that's what we're gonna start with. Now, as I've got here with my lovely little face, um, these steps work for all the Google file types. So anything you can drop into Schoology. There's a few different options for this. You can drop them as a link and kids will click that and it'll open a new tab and it'll take them to wherever. Or you can embed them, which means that it lives inside Schoology and they won't send them anywhere else. It'll just be in Schoology and they'll see the form or the doc or the slides or whatever it is, okay? Now you can, there is such a thing as like adding a link in Schoology or I like to do things called pages. For those of you who are really new to Schoology, it just creates its own page for things. And then I can kind of like jazz it up a little bit and all of that, okay? If you are new and you're going, I whoa, what are pages? What's happening? Slow down. Um, no stress. I'm gonna show you how to do that in one second. But I want to also address that there are different display options in Schoology that a lot of people don't know about. And so I'm gonna be talking about using pages. And with pages, there is this tiny little icon at the bottom of your edit page screen. And it's grayed out, I call it the newspaper. And if I hover over it when it's gray, it's just gonna say display on a new page, okay? And what that means is when I post it, here's my title of the page. My students will have to actually click that title in order to see whatever the content is that I put on that page, okay? So that's one option. The other option is if I click that little newspaper looking thing and it turns a darker color, it throws a little blue in there. And what that means is on the materials page, my students will be able to see whatever content I put on that page. So they don't have to click into that page. They can still click the title and it'll bring up the page by itself. Um, but anything that I put is gonna just appear on my material screen right there. And so that's just kind of a cool little thing and it might jazz up what you're seeing a little bit more. But you also wanna keep in mind, don't overwhelm your kids with 3 million things, right? Okay, so let's, let's check it out. 
So the first one I'm gonna talk about is adding as a link. Now, this is like we said, think about your sharing settings. Don't just drop in the link to your Google Doc and be like, I'm good. Make sure it's open to everyone in your domain or everyone on the internet, right? And you're gonna actually copy that link for this part to work, okay? When I click, this is going to um, turn on a GIF that I made of how to go through these steps. And it does go kind of fast. And so if you're going, ah, no, 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 slow down. Keep in mind, again, you have access to this presentation. You have access to this YouTube um, event as well. And I've hidden some slides that have just the like step one, step two, that sort of thing. So you can check those out. OK, so in order to add as a link, I'm going to go to my course. I'm going to click add materials, click add page at the bottom. I'm going to click that link button, paste it in, give it a title. My kids will know what it means. Click attach and click create. Boom. That's it. I can make my page look a little snazzier. I can do some cool things with it, but that's it. Notice there is also a add materials, add link button that I can do. That's pretty easy as well. It's whatever makes sense to you. But if I add my link as a page, here's my display options. Okay, so here's what it looks like in line. It's just gonna have this little image down here of like, hey, there's a link attached that they can click. All right, or you can do it on a new page where they click it and it'll take them to a brand new page. Pretty simple. Um, that one is, you know, if you're like, I just need to drop this in here and I don't want to deal with anything else. Perfect. Links are great. One of the things that annoys me about links, though, is when I'm sharing something with my students is sometimes they're accessing things on their phone or they're on like a smaller device or a tablet or whatever. And when I share, for example, a slide deck with them, what annoys me is over here on the left-hand side, right? They're gonna see all my slides. Then if I put any speaker notes, they're gonna see that. And the main slide content is actually kind of small, especially if they're on their phone or whatever. And so that's a bummer, I don't like that. So instead of making it like that, boom, what if we make it like that? And it gets rid of all the stuff on the left-hand side. It gets rid of my speaker notes. They can't see it. And that big slide, that's full screen for them. I love it. It is so easy to do this, guys. It's crazy. Um, the other thing that's nice about this is if you're like me and you occasionally put like answer keys in your speaker notes or anything else that maybe you don't want them to see, this is great because it hides that. They can't see that. Here's how stinking easy this step is, guys. All you do is you get your link, then you copy it, you paste it somewhere, and you're gonna look in that link for the word edit. You are going to delete the word edit and you're gonna write the word present instead. Copy that link, drop that link in Schoology or wherever, and that's going to give you that beautiful view that I love that gets rid of all that stuff, makes it full screen. So easy. Do that. Oh, my gosh. It's amazing. Um, think about your kids who are looking on their phones. They're going to appreciate that a lot more because usually they don't need all of those other things. Right. So replace edit with present first quick hit of the day. All right. So next we're gonna talk about embedding. And embedding I think is a lot prettier. It just kind of looks a little snazzier and we know kids get distracted, right? And so if we wanna keep them in Schoology, we don't want them going to other websites and doing other things, this will keep them in Schoology to access your Google stuff, okay? Now we're gonna be using something called a Google Drive resource app. Depending on your Schoology, your district probably already activated this for you if you have the district license. If they didn't, or if this is your very first time or you're using the free one or whatever, I do have, this is the link to add that because you need that in order to embed and for some things we're gonna do later, okay? So if you don't have it, there's that. So in order to embed, here's all I gotta do. I go to my course. I go to materials, I click add materials, add page, just like we did before. 
I'm going to go up at the top to that lovely little button with the arrow and click Google Drive resource app. This is all of my Google Drive. Everything is in here. And I know like it's still going and I missed the step and that's fine. Um, so the only downfall is it's not organized by my um, folders. So I will have to search for whatever it is I'm looking for. And that's okay. Okay, so once I, and I'm gonna wait for my gift to catch up here, click add content, click Google Drive resource app, find my doc, click that gear icon and click import embed. Once that's done, that big yellow box is gonna appear and that's how I know my thing is in there. I'm not gonna see it, but it's in there, okay? Make my page look as fancy as I want and create that page. And that's it then my students are going to see that content inside Schoology. They're not clicking anything else. If it's a slide deck, they can click through the slides. If it's a form, they can go and they can respond in there. All of that good stuff. Really, really simple and easy. Okay. So then, so you can see, here's what it's going to look like once I've done that. Okay. This is a slide deck because I wanted to show you that this interactivity is available in the slide deck. Notice it just automatically does that present so they don't see all of the slide notes and things like that. But this is what it looks like. This is in line. So on the materials page, they would see this. If I embed it as a new page, all they have to do is click this title and that's going to take them to a page that has this exact same image. Okay, pretty simple, pretty easy stuff. Looks really, really nice. All right, that ties directly into like, I am a Bitmoji lover. Those of you guys who know me or who have worked with me, you probably knew my Bitmoji before you knew me. Uh, and this Bitmoji classroom thing is huge. It is popping, right? So I wanted to briefly tell you guys about how to do the Bitmoji in there, okay? That stuff that I just showed you with embedding, that's the easiest way to do Bitmoji. I'm going to make a page. I'm going to embed my Google slide in there. It's beautiful. It's in my materials. I can drag it into a folder. I can move it around, whatever. That's the easiest way to go about that. Another way is embedding it as an announcement, which is what I'm going to show you now. Okay. So <clears throat> excuse me. So embedding it as an announcement makes it way more noticeable for my students. And it's going to pop up at the top of their screen because it's an announcement and they're kind of forced to look at it. So I personally like my Bitmoji classroom that I made is just a place for resources. I'm really not going to be updating it very much. It's resources my students are going to go to again and again. And so that I'm probably going to make as the announcement and leave it for most of the year. I might update it here and there, but that's about it. Okay. Before I get into how to make this announcement embed, uh, I do want to point out for some reason, there's some weird glitch. And when you go to do this as an announcement, you might not see the embed option. And if that's the case, it's really obnoxious. There is a solution. It's a quick fix, but it is obnoxious. I had to do it. And thanks to Amaya, she is a wonderful Facebook poster. She's got a great YouTube channel of Schoology stuff. Here's a video that I linked to that she goes through how to fix this issue. Um, and so Tiffany, we have a quick question. And I think I don't know if you, you touched on it, but could you embed for a Google Meet? Or because people are using the conference app where they're not using the conference app in Schoology, but could you use like a different meeting system? Great or question. I actually don't know the answer to that. Um, mm -hmm. I've always just put the link into the Google Meet um, because I usually want my kids like going somewhere else in Schoology. Um, so I don't know, actually, if anybody in chat knows, fill us in. OK, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. All right, so we are going to talk about embedding your Bitmoji, okay? And this is as an announcement. So what I'm going to do is in my course, I'm going to go to updates on the left, and I'm going to add a resource in here, okay? Now, this was, if it went quick, but it was at the bottom, and it looks like a little file box. It's not that insert content button. 
because for some reason it doesn't have that there. Okay, so I'm gonna click that file. It's gonna then pop up. I'm gonna go to apps and I'm gonna go to my Google Drive um, app. And in there, search for my thing because again, it doesn't have my folders. And I'm gonna click my gear icon again. As a reminder, gear icons in Schoology are golden. That's where you find all of your stuff and find all of the edit options, okay? Click that gear icon, then I click um, import embed and notice it did pop up. I got the little image so I can redrag, like resize it and everything like that. Before I click post, this is so important guys, don't click post right away. Next to post on the left, there's this little button. It's got a dialog box with a plus sign. I'm gonna click that and there's a drop down. And on that drop down, I'm gonna check the box next to the bell, okay? That's gonna make it an announcement as opposed to just an update, okay? Once I post an update, I can't make it an announcement. I have to do it as I'm posting it. Otherwise, if I'm like, oh man, I wanted that to be an announcement, I have to go back and start over. Gross, okay? Um, so I'm gonna click that. And then once I've done that, it is forced at the top. So it's my own banner basically. And when my students see it, it's gonna be right up here on their materials page and on their updates page. So they can't really miss it at all. And it's gonna stay there until I take it away. Any links that I've put, they're still clickable, all right? And if I'm using a Bitmoji Classroom that has multiple slides, then this is perfect. This is exactly what it's gonna look like. However, because mine isn't this crazy number of slides and I just have these two links, this is a huge thank you to Denise um, from the Bitmoji Craze for Educators Facebook group. Get so much from them. If you only have one slide, Instead, and I don't like this border, I don't need it because there's no interactivity, like I don't need that stuff. To get rid of that, I can just make this a Google drawing. And there goes my thing kind of slow. I can make this a Google drawing and then it gets rid of all of that. Everything is still clickable. I still have my lovely classroom, it's great. And literally I had already made my slides. So I copied everything, pasted it into a drawing and that was it guys. So I can embed my drawing. Beautiful, I love it. So now you guys know how to do um, your Bitmoji Classroom in Schoology. Okay, so that was a lot and that was the kind of quick overall, you know, what is, how do I just get kids to access things? Next, we're gonna talk about building assignments. Um, I'm gonna pause real quick, Amber, are there any, quick questions we have that we can talk about for a minute um let's see um i was just looking i think people were worrying about that conference app and that meet that was the one that i saw um is there a way to get the the black stuff off the google slide off <laughs> there you go only if you change it to a drawing okay only if you change it to a drawing okay because yeah. that was a question in the chat um let's see if there's anything else I don't think so. I think that they're kind of people are answering them as they're going to each other. So we're good. <laughs> I love it, guys. I love it. All yeah. right. Awesome. Beautiful. So now we're going to talk about assignments because this is the good stuff because it's all great for me to put resources for students. But what about the things that I want them to do? Right. And so I'm going to talk about this in three parts, building the assignments as the students are working on the assignments and then grading the assignments and how these integrate. Now, I did just hear this morning that they are gonna be updating this. So this is what things look like now. And I heard they're keeping this structure as they're testing out some other pieces. So, you know, that's how it always goes, right? You train and you plan and everything changes. So here is how you build a Google assignment in Schoology. Guys, it is so easy, all right? This works for Google file types of all kinds, except for forms. You cannot like send students a form that they will automatically get created for them, okay? Um, in here, this will work for sheets and slides and all of that. Again, we're gonna need that Google Drive app connected. So here's the how to again. So that way you can do that because otherwise it's not going to work. But here's how easy it is, guys. 
You're going to go to your course. You're going to go to add materials. You're going to go to add assignment. You're going to click Google Drive assignments. Pop up your Google Drive. Search for your assignments that you have. Click it and click attach. That's it. That's all you got to do, guys. All right. I can add rubrics to it. I can add more directions. I can, you know, do all of these extra cool, fun things. But that's it. That's all. <laughs> like, how easy is that? Right. I click create. It sends it. I can even send it to only a couple of kids at a time or a group of kids or whatever. I can't express whew, how much I love it. So then here's what it's going to look like. Here is my example, the Freyer model vocabulary. Um, the blue is what they will click to get into the assignment. And the black is the description of the assignment that I wrote. So no, it's not going to tell your kids this is a Google Drive assignment. I wrote Google Drawing assignment. OK, just so we're clear. So for this example, I did use a Google Drawing so you can see that. But again, it works with all file types. OK. One thing that I want to say is if you are copying an assignment to another course, maybe you're sharing with a teacher or something like that, you will need to reattach your Google files. OK, just get in that habit, because otherwise the course that gets the copy, those students can't open that Google document unless you reattach. And then in the middle of class, you'll get 30 kids going, but wait, it's I can't open this. Nothing's happening. OK, so reattach files when you're copying. Wow, that was a quick section on building. So easy. So let's take a look at what this looks like in progress while your students are working, which is one of the things that I love about this. So this is the teacher view before my students open anything. So immediately after I post, here's what it looks like. I've got this assignment tab, an in progress tab and a submissions tab. On the assignment tab, it's going to have all of the info. It's going to have my original document, if I added a rubric, if there's any description or directions or anything, all of that's in there. My in progress tab is going to have a list of my students. And if I have sections, it's going to have an ability for me to swap between sections. And because nobody's opened it, it's going to have this note that says, nobody's opened this. There's nothing to check out here. And then the last tab is the submissions tab. Because nobody's opened, nothing to do. So like this lovely lady, you can sit back and relax for right now. OK. But then once my students open it, this is what it's going to look like. So I am in the in progress tab. Like I said, if I have multiple sections attached, there's going to be a drop down option right here for me to toggle between courses. Over here on the left is going to be my list of students. This is a practice course. I only have one student in here. Thanks, Drea. And the person who I'm selected, who I'm looking at, they're going to be highlighted in blue. OK, so I click one click. That's all to get between all my students. It's really noticeable whose paper I'm looking at because they're in blue over here. Their name is right here. And it made a copy of that assignment for them, of that document for them. Once they opened it, it saves it as their name and the title of the document. So I'm not, there's, it's really hard for you to get confused about who you're looking at, okay? So um, some other things about what this looks like. So in real time, I can see their progress. I can see what they're doing. So I can see this is the vocab word that she got and she's putting together, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. So, one idea for this that I want to share is something I did with an art teacher a couple of years ago. She wanted to know, like, what are my students doing each day? Like, they have this big project that takes a couple of weeks. I might not have time to check in with everybody every day, but I want to know what they're accomplishing. And so what she did is she made a Google Doc with a section for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Every day, the last five minutes of class, her students took a picture of what they had accomplished on their drawing. They put the picture into the doc on that day and they had to write a sentence or two explaining what they accomplished. At any point, I can go in on my Schoology and I can see exactly what they've what they're working on. I can see them typing lifetime just like a Google Doc. And so that was a really great use for that because she could see and it wasn't just like, did they do this in 10 minutes the day before it was due or whatever, right? So I can see their progress real time. 
Tiffany, quick question because Shannon Moore has put a wait right there on the screen for us to answer it for her. And so um, when you create an assignment and push copy to course, we have to go into the other courses and add the Google Drive assignment. Is that the same if the classes are linked? Great question. If they are linked, it should be totally fine and everything should go smooth because I'm making that assignment once and it's going to all of those courses. Yes. Okay. Perfect. So I'm going to put her in capital letters. Wait. She didn't have that question answered. So we're good. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so um, back to this. So I can leave comments, right? And everything is right here in Schoology. Now, depending on the device that your students are using, um, they might not see those comments just because of the screen size and Schoology resizes things. So just kind of check in with your students and be like, I left you a comment, did you see it, okay? Now, some of us, um, oops, oh, I forgot about this part. If you can't see your document, if nothing's popping up, you can click here to help you with that connection like I talked about. There's a lot of glitches there, okay? But if you're like me and you wear these lovely glasses and maybe you are grading or looking at student work on a smaller device, there is this open button um, because you cannot resize this Schoology screen for your Google Doc. And so that's can be a struggle. <laughs> and uh, so if you click this open button, it'll take you to a new tab with just their document on it. So it's larger and you can see it a little nicer if you're like me and struggle with that. Um, and then there's also this exception button. So I can click that and say, guess what? Drea doesn't need to complete this assignment because she's doing something different or whatever the case is. Okay, so that's the teacher view in progress while students are working. Here's the student view for you, okay? So this, they have two tabs. They have assignment and they have my document. All right, so the assignment is just like mine. It's got all the details. If I put a rubric, it's got that, any descriptions, right? And then the my document tab lives in Schoology. They're not going to other tabs. They're not going to any other place, right? It's all in here. They do have the option to click edit so that way they can open a new tab and it's full screen and they can work in their doc that way. They also have the if something goes wrong and they need to reconnect and then they have this submit button right in there. So all they have to do is click that to turn it in and it connects and everything like that. So <clears throat> this is when people start going, but wait, I gave them this assignment. Where is it? Like what happens if my student tries to delete it or something like that, right? Stressful, of course, our students would never consider doing something like that. So here's where the files live. You, the teacher, you are the owner. You made the copies in Google's mind, okay? So here's where we go. We go to Google Drive, we go to My Drive. Once I've made a Google Drive assignment, it's then going to automatically generate this folder called Schoology Google Drive Assignments. Inside that folder are going to be folders for each of my different Schoology courses. Okay, auto-generated. Inside that folder is going to be folders with the names of all of the Google Drive assignments I have. And inside that folder is going to be um, as soon as that ugly back black bar goes away, is going to be all of my students' uh, documents. Notice it is organized by their name and then the file name, okay? And as you can see in red, I'm the teacher, I'm the owner. This is my document. They can't delete it, okay? Keep that in mind. So at any point, if Schoology is not working, I can still go in and look at their work. And for the student, it looks a little different because it's in there shared with me because they're not the owners. So they go to Google Drive, they go to shared with me and they can search for their document there. And then they can add it to their drive and organize it if they want quicker access to it. OK, so that's where they live. Everybody's always asking me that. Then I always get this question. But wait, I have a co-teacher and the co-teacher went to grade something and it wasn't working. And what do I do? No stress. OK, remember, Google all powerful, Google owns it all, right? And so 
what you need to do is you need to go to Google. You need to go to the folder for that course and share that with your co-teacher. Give them full editing rights so that way they can go in and they can grade um, and they can see their students work. OK, if I do that at the folder level, then I don't have to do that again the rest of the year. If I do that at the Schoology um, course folder, then they will have access to all the Google Docs throughout the rest of the year. OK, and it's whoever is the lead teacher. So the first admin on that course. Keep that in mind. OK, beautiful. So now to the grading. And again, guys, it's so easy. I love this integration, um, especially because I've been using, you know, technology for quite a while. And I remember having to have my students share links with me and then, oh, but Timmy, you didn't open up your sharing settings. And, and I've got 17,000 tabs open and everything lives in Schoology and it's so pretty. Um, so let's talk about grading and what it looks like. <clears throat> For students, here's how simple it is to submit. They click that submit button on their in their doc. There's going to be a pop up. Are you sure? They click yes. Once they click yes, it's going to say like, okay, it's submitted. You're good. And here's what happens. Take a look down here. And as soon as that black bar goes away, they now have no more editing rights on this assignment. So they can't turn it in by the official due date and keep working, right? We know some kids who do that. Um, they are now, only, they can only comment. They can't make any more edits, which is awesome, right? <laughs> then let's say they turned it in and then they're like, oh, I forgot to put this in there or whatever. Over here on the side, they still have this unsubmit button, okay? They can unsubmit until you grade it. And that's why it says this assignment has not yet been graded and they have that unsubmit button. So if Tanya is like, oh, I forgot to add that image you wanted me to add, she can go unsubmit, redo it, put that image back in and we're good. Okay. So here's what it looks like on the teacher end. Once it's submitted, ideally your in progress tab looks like this with the dude lounging because all of our students turn everything in on time and all at once, right? That's how life works. Um, and then there is our submissions tab. So we've got a couple of cool things in here. There is a filter and I can organize my student list over here on the left by these different filters. So I can just look at the kids who turned it in on time, who are late, who I haven't graded, who I have graded, or I can leave it on this blank bar and that's just gonna show me my entire class. Right. I can click around on my students. They'll highlight in blue when I'm looking at their paper. OK, if I did not attach a rubric over here in the upper corner is how many points I made it out of. And I can just click this little line and I can type in whatever their score is. I can leave them notes, all that good stuff. But if you make your life easier and you add a rubric, which is something you have to do before. If you're like, I don't know Schoology, so I don't know how to do rubrics. Um, sorry, that's not in this one, but I can help you. Someone else can help you anything. You're gonna click this lovely little box and your rubric pops up on the side. Ah, so easy. And the rubric is super clickable and friendly. So all I have to do is for each of the criteria that I set, I simply just click what their score is, click, click, click. Um, and then I can also click this dialog box and leave them a little note. Make sure to click save or it won't save, right? Um, you might be wondering, can I give them a middle score? So can I give them like a 2.5 on this rubric? And there's no way to like click these two different numbers, but I can click this number here and I can type in 2.5 or something like that, okay? So keep that in mind. Yes, you can do partial scores. Once I've gone through all my criteria at the very bottom, I have this gradebook comment button. And so I can give them a little note and I can choose if I wanna share that info with them or not. So it could be a note that's just for me, that's like um, suspicious of cheating or something like that and make sure I click save and then make sure I click save on the overall rubric, okay? It automatically calculates their score and it sends it to my Schoology gradebook. Boom, boom, all done. 
that's that's that guys and here's what it looks like for my students there when they open their documents they're going to see this rubric they're going to see their scores and any notes and they're going to see their overall score which is really really nice and easy and clear i love it i love it all except here's the thing that i hate so i am an english teacher at heart right meaning when i have essays my students usually are allowed to do revisions and resubmit unfortunately not so pretty in schoology and that is a huge bummer and something you should totally reach out to schoology and keep bugging them about because the more we bug them the more likely they are to fix this so once i the teacher have graded the assignment my students no longer have that button to unsubmit their assignment meaning they're locked out of the assignment they can't make edits okay bummer me as the teacher because i'm the owner i am the one who has to give them those rights back okay so i have to go in and i can click unsubmit for my students okay when i click unsubmit whatever their score is that stays in the grade book unless i clear it out okay but i have to click unsubmit then my students revise they submit it again i'll get a notification that hey a student turned something in but because this is already has a grade on it there i can't find where it is it's really unfortunate that this is the process <laughs> i love you schoology but i don't love this uh and so what i have always had teachers do is you have to have students email you or if you're in person, leave you a sticky note or whatever that says, me, Tiffany, I resubmitted the Freyer model vocabulary assignment in Schoology because otherwise you as the teacher, you're not gonna know. So typically here's the process that I did is after my students turned in all of their work, I went through and I clicked unsubmit for everybody because I didn't want to have to remember, oh, you know what, they said they want to unsubmit, so I need to remember today after school to unsubmit. No, I did it all in one swoop. So that way, like their grades are still in the grade book. But at any point, if at midnight, so and so decides that they need to revise because they're grounded now, um, that I'm not getting these desperate emails of I can't do anything, right? So I would have my, I would unsubmit everything right, right after grading. Then I would still tell students, you've got to email me when, if you revise. And if I don't get an email or a notice from you, I'm not even looking, I'm not even going to try to dig through. So that's on them. I know it's hard. I am working with middle schoolers again. I get it. It's a struggle, but school, you can't be perfect, right? Not everything can be. So that is that. That was a super fast zoom zoom um, about how to use Google and Schoology. Um, I would say Amber is, or Drea, are there any questions that are popping up um, that we can chat about for a few minutes? Yeah, so let's see. Um, do we get this one? No, so um, do you have to unsubmit for each student individually? Yes, they don't even have like <clears throat> a bulk unsubmit. Schoology, mm -hmm. get on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, okay, let's see if I see anything else in here. People are really good at answering these questions for each other, so it's really nice. Oh, no joke. No. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Oh, and I know that this is just something that I know about Schoology too, and I think we need to reiterate it, is that when you copy things to courses, you have to upload the Google Doc again, the attachment again. It doesn't copy to it. And I know that teachers are always, like some of the teachers in my district at least, they would do it and then they'd get a thousand emails and like, there's no assignment. So just make sure if you copy a course, you have to go in and add that attachment. It doesn't go with it. Yep, yep, yep. And then let's see. I did just see a question pop up about the grade book, and I do want to address that real quick. So sure. um, if you are using the Schoology grade book, which you'd be kind of silly not to if you're using assignments, you need to find out if your district has it attached to if you're using Infinite Campus or whatever platform. So, for example, I know that in Denver Public Schools, where I'm coming from, 
they have that option, but your school has to set it up. Uh, and so you need to reach out to your district about things like that. Like, is that an option for us? Right. Otherwise, if it's not, you, you do have to double enter and go to your others. Yeah. Um, another one is, are rubrics reusable or do you have to create a new one for each assignment? Oh, great question, Cindy. So rubrics, yes, with an asterisk. Um, <laughs> so you can reuse rubrics. However, you want to make sure that you are not making any changes to a rubric you've already used. Because let's say I just want to use this rubric because it's really generic and it's perfect. Um, if I make a change and I've used that, it's going to retroactively adjust grades attached to that rubric. So if you are going to make even the slightest little change, make a new rubric. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> let's see. Here's a question. Uh, can you have the comments you write be uh, seeable by the student? Um, I hate having to click the button every time I want students to see my comments. <laughs> um, so I'm Claude, there's a couple different places for comments. So if you are talking about the comments in the Google Doc, I say this, it should be open. They should be able to see your comments. If you're talking about the comments attached to the rubric in Schoology, when you've saved your final grade and that like student view that I showed you guys, um, let me just click over to that real quick. Do, 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 maybe my computer, <laughs> wrong mouse, that's why. Uh, <laughs> this guy, if you left them comments, it will appear below there. I just didn't leave comments on this example. I do that all the time. I was just telling you guys that I click the wrong mouse when I have two different devices open. Oh, no. like, oh that's <laughs> not working. Who knew? <laughs> um, okay, I think, uh, let's see if there's anything else. I, I think that we have got them going. Um, yeah, I think that's all. If there's anything else, then of course you can reach out to Tiffany. You can reach out to, to, um, or to her with anything that you have and, and, or reach out to me and I can let her know as well. I know a little bit about Schoology. I don't know a lot about Schoology, so I can help some, but not a lot. So, okay, here's another one. Will we have access to the chat? There are some great questions and answers in here. Oh, yes, yes. So the YouTube chat, it actually populates 24 hours after the video is recorded. So just so you know, the chat um, will not be like live right away, but don't worry, no fear. It will be, it takes about 24 hours for all of the chat to come up. So um, you don't need to worry about that. You can go back and reread all the things in the chat. Yes, good question. I know people worry about that sometimes. <laughs> And then I did see another question from Suzanne Reed, and it looks like Shannon also helped out with that. Um, yes, you can have students like ask questions about assignments. They can do um, a private comment. You have to like decide if you want that on or off when you are making an assignment, just so you are aware. Um, it's one of the icons at the bottom on that pop-up screen. And so if ever you're like, what are all those weird icons? Hover your mouse over and the little dialog box box will pop up that lets you know. So right. And then yeah. also, like in Google Classroom, you have like a comment bank. So I think Michelle asked that does it have a comment bank? No. Unfortunately. <laughs> I can actually learn that. I didn't even know that Google Classroom had a comment bank. And I was like, oh my gosh, genius. That could have saved me so much time. Oh, man. <laughs> But okay, um, let's see, here's a question here, let's see what it is. Can I auto create a blank Google Doc for students to use to complete an assignment or do I have to have one previously created an import from Google Drive? Great question. So here's kind of a, an option for you, Thomas. I'll give you two ideas for it. So one of them is you literally make a blank Google Doc and add it as a Google Drive assignment so you can get that beautiful interface that I like so much. The other option is you just make a general assignment and they would then have to add their Google Doc to it. Um, downfall with that is they might not have opened their sharing settings or anything like that. So if you want that really pretty interface I showed you, you'll need to do like a blank Google Doc. And that's yeah. that's about that. So. Definitely. Um, what about, I don't know if you've had this question before, because I know you work in upper level, but any tips for kinder users? 
I would say the general of like lots of images. Um, you can in like titles, you can add emojis and things like that. So making those things kind of clear, you can color code your folders and to make sure that, you know, they are seeing that. I would highly recommend using your Google Drive stuff um, because then it will make the copy for them and you don't have to give them other kinds of directions and things like that. It's as much as you can do for them. So you're not having, especially for going remote, you're not having to explain, um, okay, then you need to do this and copy this and like, do as much for them and make it as bright and colorful and clear as possible would be my advice. So I don't know if you can do it in Schoology. I know I do it in Google Classroom, but can you put emojis on um, in the assignment detail, like be able to do that in Schoology? Because yeah. if you can do that, what I had suggested to people is that the kids can identify pictures more than they can words. And so if you're having them do an assignment and you want them to be able to do it, say, okay, today's assignment was with the smiley face emoji or is with the heart emoji. And then they're able to go in there and find that assignment very quickly because they can identify shapes rather than, and, and pictures rather than words. And so if you yep. can put emojis in there, if, if you don't know how to do that, I literally just right click on my mouse and then it says emoji and I just click it and I can do whatever I want. And so uh, do that because I think that's a really good tip for, for little kids. You definitely need to have those pictures. And if you can have it in the assignment detail, they can identify it easily. Yep. You can also include full images and um, you can include videos and you can include lots of stuff in those assignment descriptions that mm -hmm. will make it super noticeable for your students. Right. Okay. I think I can answer this question, but tell me if I'm wrong. So can you add a Google form as an assignment? So from my experience is that you have to use the external link add file um, option. And then you put the form link in the external link uh, file option that's gonna be in your uh, materials when you click it down. And so if you use that one, that's how I've had teachers put Google Forms in. It doesn't upload like a regular document like through your drive. I have to put it in as an external link. Is that correct? Yes. and. With that, you can embed a form. It's not as an assignment, so you can't like, I mean, you can add a grading column, but it's not gonna talk to your grade book or anything like that. So, yeah. um, yep. So, and then I just, I'll answer this last question I see from Brenda, can you add audio? And the answer is yes, Schoology has in that. Um, one of the gifts I show you the insert content button, it's a little arrow. And you can add audio, you can add videos, you can add pictures, you can do da, 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 so many things. I know, I just recently learned that too, that you can add audio and you can add video in there. And so it's really great because the kids can do kind of like their own Flipgrid with inside of Schoology. Yes, kids can respond with audio too. Woo, I love yeah, it. Exactly. All right, so we're gonna wrap up here. Um, I just want to give a huge, huge thank you for joining. And even if you joined on your own time, thank you so much for watching this. Um, I hope you got something from it. I hope you're able to kind of operate this a little bit. Please reach out to me on Twitter or email if you have questions or ideas, or if I got something wrong, let me know, right? I, I hope I didn't. Um, I do have a little feedback form. Um, I would love it if you filled that out for me. I am a Google certified trainer, so I do you know, a lot of trainings and I want to make sure that this was valuable. And if it wasn't, let me know how I can make that better. And because I know the feedback part of like getting people to do surveys doesn't always like work out that well, um, I am offering a giveaway. I have one free year of Cami Teacher to give away to one lucky feedback filler outer. Um, so if you want to be entered for that, make sure you fill in my feedback form and make sure you include your email address. And on Monday, I'll do a drawing and someone will get a free year of Cami Teacher. Woo! I, I, I actually have come to notice that not everybody knows what Cami is. So I'll, I'll quickly give a rundown so people know because it is amazing. Uh, so Cami Extension is easily able to make your PDF documents or documents that students can't write on 
easily able to be editable. And the kids can edit on them. It saves right to their Google Drive and then they can upload it right into it. So it's super amazing. I showed it to some teachers recently and they loved it. So again, Cami is like, uh, that's a win because it's, you know when you go to like teachers pay teachers and you have like these PDFs that you don't wanna recreate or you take a screenshot of something, you don't wanna recreate it, then you can use Cami and you can actually put text boxes and the kids can answer it. So just so you know. For, for math teachers, like come on, they can do their math problem, problems right on there, show their work. Ooh, yes, love it. I love Cami too. I love Cami too, it's awesome. So feedback form is there and um, you can and follow all that here, you, you yes. have an event coming up in a few so, an hour and a half. Yeah, all of you that are here, um, if you are going to stick around for the rest of the afternoon on YouTube at 12.30 today, we are in 12.30 Mountain Standard Time, so 2.30 Eastern Time, um, we're going to be having a Flipgrid event. If you don't know what Flipgrid is, it's so amazing. So it's a video production kind of tool that the kids can use, but they can do so many things. It's super versatile. There's, you know, math, there's all about me, there's reading, there's physical activity that you can do with it. I use it every week for Flipgrid Fridays where the kids would record summaries of themselves and for distance learning it's huge because there's so many things you can do with the kids being having a personal message between you and them and so um join us today if you would love love to we have some a special guests from flipgrid that will be joining us and it's just going to be a great time i have gone uh, above and beyond to try to make it a great event so thank you for putting that in there tiffany yes well, thank you, everybody. This was awesome. Um, reach out and good luck this year in whatever way you are working with students. So Yes, thank you so much. And we will see you again for another GEG Colorado event in the future. Woo! Bye. Bye.